Hey everybody, Todd Bettenhausen here, and I'm going to talk a little bit more today about input lag. It's a really important subject for sim racers and computer gamers in general. Now, first of all, input lag is not the specification that you see quoted when you go to choose a display device. They usually call it response time, and it'll be 5 milliseconds, 2 milliseconds. That has to do with how fast the pixels can change state, transition from on to off, or how they change colors. Input lag is a lot more important than that. Input lag is the amount of time that elapses from when a signal is sent to your device to when it actually displays it. And the reason it's important is because it can vary a lot. A good display device may have input lag as, as low as 3 or 4 milliseconds and a poor one can have over 100 milliseconds of input lag. That's a tenth of a second. It doesn't sound like much, but in a racing game if you're, if you're moving at 200 miles an hour, your car will cover 30 feet in a tenth of a second. Um, missing the apex of a turn by 30 feet is a pretty big miss. So if you want to have a good experience and you're very competitive in your gaming, it pays to choose display devices very wisely. Now manufacturers don't quote this specification and often we don't know. You're relying on someone else's word or you may get a display device home and find that it has very poor, poor performance. It just doesn't work for you. But that's all changing now because Leo Bodner in England has developed this portable input lag tester. A real simple device that can be taken to your computer store or your AV store and you can test for yourself. Um, no guesswork. You're going to know whether a device performs well or not. And the way it works is, or how it works, sends a signal down the wire to the device. The device displays a test pattern. The tester reads it through this light sensor and it prints right on the screen what your what your input lag figure is. So we'll go ahead and fire it up. You press and hold the button. Test pattern comes up on the screen. And there, there are three reference marks. You can see there's one in the top, the middle one that I'm near, and the bottom one. And sometimes it takes a reading very quickly, other times you have to you have to hold it over a mark for a little while. And I'll explain why why we have three marks. And also why once you see the the result come up, you'll see it varying, you'll see it fluctuating. But first of all we'll see if my aim is good. There we go. And this device has around ten milliseconds, perhaps a touch more, of input lag. First of all, the three reference marks. Why do we have three? Because most of these display devices paint the picture from the top down and it takes about 15 milliseconds. So if we had 10 milliseconds here, we're going to have about three here, we're going to have about 17 here, roughly. The middle reference mark, since this thing's outputting 60 frames per second, is the most analogous to, to gaming at 60 frames per second, which is a good baseline. So if you're gaming at an average frame rate of 60 frames per second, you're going to see about 10 milliseconds of input lag using this Hans G HG281D, which is known to be a good responsive device. If you had a much higher frame rate, you'd see closer to 3 or 4 milliseconds of input lag. What's measured at the top mark, and that's what Leo, Leo Bodner, the inventor of the device, refers to as the zero reference. Now why was the value fluctuating? Because these devices don't keep their backlight on 100% of the time. They control their brightness by varying the amount of time spent on versus off. More backlight time on, brighter picture. Less backlight time on, dimmer picture. And in order for the test device to read that test pattern, two things have to happen. The white pixel has to be displayed and the backlight has to be on. And some time might pass where the white pixel is displayed and the backlight is in an off state and then it'll have to come to an on state and that'll cause a little bit longer input lag figure so that's why you see that variance plasma devices are different they emit light directly they have no backlight so you'll see a solid consistent reading when you measure a plasma with this tester another thing um, those who follow my channel know that I've done some testing on a projector recently an NEC DLP projector and when I tested it, I got an interesting result. All three reference marks read 16.7 milliseconds, exactly one frame at 60 frames per second. And that's because DLPs 
can update all their pixels simultaneously. That's the way a DLP chip works. And that's probably the theoretical minimum of a projector that, that doesn't do much video processing. And that's another important point too. If your display device has a game mode or a, a PC or computer mode, uh, make sure you try that because input lag is caused by video processing generally. And the less processing that a display device does, the shorter the input lag is going to be. So make sure you test and make sure if you're at home and you're, you think your displays are performing poorly, especially televisions and projectors, make sure you check for a game mode and try it out. Okay, that's about it. I'll tell you in the description how to, how to get one of these. They're not expensive and it's a really, really good investment to make if you're serious about your gaming because you can avoid some expensive mistakes. Going out and buying projectors, a large TV, or three monitors for a surround rig. Um, this is a very small investment to make to, to be sure that you're going to get a display that performs well. So I'll tell you how to get it from Leo in my description. And if you have any questions, please, uh, the iRacing forums are the best place to catch me first of all, but I'll try to get to the YouTube comments as well. So that's about it for now. Again, Todd Bettenhausen here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.